This is a call to prayer. This is a call to prayer. Asking every believer to look at the signs of the times, to recognize where we are and fall on their knees before God. It's time to seek the Lord's face. It's time to ask God to trim our wicks. Saints of God, we can no longer be lazy about the place of prayer. We can no longer expect someone else to pray for us. I feel led to minister to the church in America. I feel led to minister to the church in America. I feel your pain. I can feel your pain. I feel the division. God, let your spirit, O oh God, hover over American church, O oh Lord Jehovah God, let your spirit move as your spirit moved over a formless mass, O oh Lord Jehovah God, before the earth was. Move over what looks formless right now in the eyes of many, O oh Lord Jehovah God. And assure your church that you're right there. That you're right there. Church in America, church in America, it's not time to cry, it's not time to get stressed, it's not time to panic, it's not time to be angry, it's not time to demand for answers from the one who cannot be questioned. It is time to fall before God. In humility fall before God. Like David fell before God. Fall before God. And if you have been praying, fall before God all the same. Because there is a place of humility that comes by falling before God even when you yourself haven't sinned. Like Job did. Job would arise early and sacrifice Go to the place of prayer and sacrifice before the Lord in case someone is in, in his home had sinned. Someone in his house had sinned. We must take the same approach. Otherwise, we will delay the healing of America. If you're asking questions, if you're feeling disillusioned, how will the world feel if we ourselves don't believe that Jesus is on the throne? We must arise. We must fall before God. We must hide ourselves in the secret place of the Almighty. There is no shortcut. There is no shortcut. When sin enters a land, the intercessors must fall before God and all of us as Christians, all of us are believers, as believers are intercessors. And for the church in Kenya, the Holy Spirit has asked me to ask you to stop it. Stop gloating. Stop laughing. It's not revenge time for 2013 and the other elections when we felt that the Kenyans ab abroad maybe laughed or mocked or asked us what we were thinking. It's time to pray. It's a season of prayer. We must read the signs and the times. I saw in a vision two things. Just when the pause was starting, as I was entering prayer, this was on, sorry, I'm feeling a little bit disillusioned in terms of days. Today's Thursday. So two days ago, Tuesday, that was the 8th. Um, I, I was getting into prayer. And I was still asking the Lord what is going on with this presidency thing. Because I didn't understand it. And it's important that we know that the prophetic is about submission to God. It's not about our will. It's the will of God. It's about who he is. It's about his end time purpose. Because we are made purely, purely for him. And as I asked God what is going on, God showed me a very quick vision. He showed me a vision of the frustration of Israel. And you know, Israel is critical to the end time plan of God. 
It doesn't matter what you think of them. I've had all, all sorts of arguments that Israel is not a nation. Israel is not a people. Israel, I don't know what. But the Jews are God's chosen people. They are. They are. This is what the Bible has talked about them. Read the book of Ezekiel. Read the book of Daniel. Read Revelations. And uh, I saw God showed me one thing. He showed me um, Hillary Clinton being president and frustrating the peace treaty. And God told me that the Obama administration frustrated the peace treaty. And God was not pleased with that. God was not pleased with that because Israel needs to find peace. We've been told that blessed are those that pray for Israel. Israel needs to find peace. We must pray for Israel. And then God showed me something. He showed me Donald Trump laughing and saying, oh, really? I'm just signing for peace. Is that all? And it did not look very, um, you know, organized or wise according to people, but it was something that pleased the Lord, that he will easily sign the peace treaty. Beloved, this world is not our home. Don't hold on to it as though it's our home. Don't mourn in it as though it's our home. We must fix our eyes on Christ. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, we must fix our eyes on Christ. We must run the race swiftly and fix steadily, perseverance. Fix our eyes on Jesus. Fix our eyes on Jesus. Endure and pray for the end and plan of God. But above all, we need to ask God to trim our wicks. What are these wicks that need to be trimmed? Has the church truly taken time to seek the Lord's face? God told me he was willing to speak. But so many of us go by our wisdom. So many of us go by our knowledge. So many of us go by our understanding. So many of us go by what we hear. So many of us go by the physical. So many of us go by what is carnal. But we are not carnal beings. We are spiritual beings. We must be able to ask God to trim our wicks. That is the time we are in. Trim our wicks, Lord. If there is anything in me that doesn't follow your way, if there is anything in me that feels that it knows, if there is anything in me that feels that I'm righteous, if there is anything in me that feels that I'm deserving, if there is anything in me that feels I have some such and right, if there is anything in me that does not recognize my position, even as a child of God, taking authority for God, believing that God is faithful, believing that God can do no wrong, believing that God is in control, believing that God is never found unawares. He is God. He is Alpha and Omega. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows the beginning from the end. He is God. He is faithful. That's who he is. So as believers, we cannot be operating like orphans. So every orphan way in us, every carnal way in us, every way that walks like a slave must be trimmed. Those are wicks that must be trimmed. Laziness in the place of prayer, preferring to go from place to place, asking people, seeking other ways, shortcuts. There are no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts. If God's people who are called by his name, oh, Second Chronicles 7, 14, we must read it. We must follow the steps. We must, first of all, realize we are God's people. We are God's people. We are not orphans. We do not walk like the ones who are caught by surprise. Revelation 3 talks about the dead church. The, the Lord came to like a thief in the night. He came like a thief in the night to the dead church, not to the faithful church. So every deadness in us, every lukewarmness in us, every laziness in us, every self-righteous spirit in us, it must be trimmed. This is the place of repentance. This is the place of repentance. Then we must ask the Lord. We must ask the Lord to give us oil. 
The oil that comes from the Holy Spirit, we cannot ask anyone else for oil. That is a foolish virgin. The Lord is calling us to be wise virgins. Church of Jesus, won't you decipher the times? Church of Jesus, won't you be caught in the things of God? Church of Jesus, won't you fix your eyes on Jesus? He's longing to speak to his bride. He's longing to minister to his bride. If we as a church are lost, what's going to happen to the world? And I know the world has acted like they do not care. But the world is feeling lost. The world is lost. The world is confused. All of creation is groaning. Is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. Where are the sons of God? And all that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Not led by anything else, not led by anyone else, led by the Spirit of God. May we fall before God, saints of God. May we repent before God. We've been caught in idol utterances. We've been caught in, a, in seeking our own way. We've been caught in trying to find the glory. We need to fall at the foot of the cross where mercy reigns and allow God to trim our wicks. Allow God to deal with us. Allow God to mold us. Allow God to change us. Allow God to show us who we are. The church has lost its salt. The church has lost its flavor. And so no wonder the world is struggling. And I know many of you are praying. I know there's a remnant. But the way of prayer, the way God works, every time over and over again, we fall down on our knees and we weep as though we are weeping for the first time. We fall down on our knees and we speak of who God is. We speak of our position. We speak of who we are. We speak of the purpose of God and it must prevail. God can never use a proud church. God resists the proud. First Peter 5, 5. God resists the proud, but he lifts up the humble. Won't you fall down now before the face of God and repent? How dare we ask him questions? How dare we demand answers? It's okay to reason with God, but if you come in an attitude of pride, if you come in an attitude of entitlement, if you come in an attitude of self-knowledge, an elevation the Lord will not allow it the Lord resists the proud it is a time to fall before God even when we ask questions it must be come let us reason together come let us reason together we need to know that we have nothing except that which is given to us by God we need to know that we have nothing except that which is given to us by the blood of Jesus it is through Jesus through Jesus he paid the price he must be exalted. He must be honored. He must be glorified. Oh, bride of Jesus, won't you come home? Oh, bride of Jesus, won't you take your place? Can you not see the signs of the times? Time is short. Time is short. Time is short. Don't get caught up in things that weigh us down. Lay down everything that entangles. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, read it, lay down, lay down. We are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. We are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Saints of God, we cannot let God down. The church in Kenya, you know what it is to go through the pain of bad leadership. We are dealing right now with a painful scandal. And when we look at it, do you know nobody is behind bars for corruption? How can Kenya laugh? We as a nation are filthy and are fallen short of the glory of God. We must be found humble. We must weep when other nations go through what we have been through because we know the pain. We must celebrate when Jesus is glorified. We must cry when the enemy looks like he's getting any inch and we must resist and refuse. Kenyans on Twitter 
I'm challenging the believers to rise up. When the enemy comes like a flood, God raises up a standard. May the saints of God rise up that standard together with the Holy Spirit as he goes up. May we rise up a standard. Don't talk like carnal men. Don't talk like people who don't know God. Remember, our words must be measured. Our words have life and death. It's a season of prayer. It's a season of crying before God. It's a season of repenting. God is shaking up the nations. You haven't even seen anything yet. If you fix out your eyes on the ground, if you fix your eyes on the news, if you fix your eyes on, on, on even the internet, like Peter, you will be found to be a Christian who's been told, come by Jesus. But you're looking around at the water and you begin to, dr to drown. It's not time to sleep, it's time to wake up. Oh, Matthew 25, 7, wake up! Wake up! Let the sleeping saint wake up. Cry for people to wake up. Cry for the saints to be wake woken up. The Gideon army that is there now must cry. The Gideon army that is awake now must cry to God and ask God to wake up. Wake up the sleeping saint. Wake up. Wake up. Let the Lord trim. I know the word of God says trim your wicks. That's the place of bringing yourself to the feet of mercy. To the feet of mercy. Laying every pattern down. Accepting beautiful ashes. Move away from helping yourself. Move away from believing in yourself. Move away from looking to man. Cursed is the person who looks to man, Jeremiah said. Cursed is the person who looks to man. We must look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. It is time. We need to be ready. Wake up, bride of Jesus. Tag somebody. Share the message with somebody. Share the message. The message of the elections came August, October. The Lord released me to be able to post, but we did not really share it. We have a church now in America and people panicking. They were caught unawares. Share the message. Tag somebody. That's our responsibility. But above all, let us fast and pray. Let us allow the Lord to trim our weeks. Let us not try to get oil from anybody else. Let us ask the Holy Spirit to give us oil. Let us watch and pray. Watch and pray. The bridegroom is coming. Watch and pray. I love you. God bless you.